Omicron is here and spreading fast. Now, according to the latest CDC data that was updated just last week, December 11th, it had already reached about 3%. In a span of one week, it has already reached about 3% of all the different variants they sequenced in the United States and is growing fast. So one question people are asking is Omicron grows? Are all these rapid antigen tests that are available in the pharmacies or in stores, are they still going to work? It's a very good question. Hello everyone, I'm Naveen Agarwal and welcome to another weekly video update. So I've been thinking about this question recently and in this video I want to share with you my analysis and update on the accuracy of one of the most popular rapid anti antigen tests out there. It's called Binex now and my understanding of if it is affected by Omicron or not and what it will take to be affected by Omicron. Not just this rapid antigen test but all other rapid antigen tests, how they work. Maybe I'll share with you some insights and help you understand the kind of question or information you should be looking for so that you can decide if the test you are about to buy is going to be effective against Omicron or not. So in this video, we will look at some of the data that I've analyzed as an update. So for those of you who have been following my channel, they know I've talked about Binex now in the past, including a video demonstration of how to do the test. You can find that on my channel. Also, I have given you updates about my analysis of its accuracy, not just what the company publishes in the paperwork they file with the FDA, but my analysis of what the accuracy means for real people in the real world. I've talked about that. So this will be part and update of that analysis and also part my analysis and understanding of the effect of Omicron or any other variant on the performance and sensitivity of these tests. So we'll share some thoughts about that towards the end of the video that you should keep in mind as more information becomes available. So let's look into this right away. Let's first understand what is detected. So if you look at this, you might have seen this graphic of uh, the coronavirus. It has many different structures. You know, in the middle, this is the, this is the RNA, that's the genetic material. You have the spike protein that you have probably heard a lot about, S. But we're going to focus about this N protein. This protein is called the nucleocapsid protein and this protein, sort of think of it as a cover for the RNA inside the viral particle. So it's more like a protective sheath. But it has a lot of good information that is used by these rapid antigen tests to detect the presence of the virus. That's how these tests are working. So keep in mind, they are not detecting the S protein, they are detecting the N protein. Now there are two different self-tests that are currently marketed by under the Binax Now brand. And it's made by Abbott. It's a COVID-19 AG card for home test. This test is a self-test at home, but it should be supervised by a telehealth proctor. So you might have used this test if you are using the result for travel purposes. You might have done that. But let me know if you are familiar with COVID-19 AG card home test. If you've done that before, what your experience was, share in the comments below. Now, anyone 15 years or older can collect the samples by themselves, but under the supervision of a telehealth proctor. But anyone between the ages of 4 and 15, an adult must collect their samples. Now there's another very popular test which is available in pharmacies and I have used that in the past. It's called the Binex Now Antigen Self-Test. So it's a different name but pretty much the same test. This test is indicated for self-test at home, 15 years or older, self-collected samples. So they can collect on their own uh, from the nasal swabs. Two years or older kids, now instead of four, even two year older kids, adults can collect their samples and use this test. But there are two tests per box and the second test is recommended after 24 hours or 48 hours for a negative result. That's what the paperwork says, that if you have reason to believe that you have been in contact, you have been exposed and the test shows negative, they are recommending and they give you a second test to do, th do the test again 24 hours or 48 hours later. So there's different language, different indication, and this is more for regulatory purposes, but as consumers, we should be aware of which test is really valid for what kind of usage. And this is very important. So these are the two different types of Binex Now tests you might have come across. Now, 
the the situation is is based on the same technology same platform the data that they have shared with the fda and is publicly available it's kind of mixed so it becomes difficult to really properly analyze it but i will i will share with you how they are reporting the test accuracy so they're reporting a table for the antigen self test performance within 7 days of symptom onset against the comparator method about 50 or so samples were collected and they were tested against an rt pcr so if they are they are finding out if rt pcr is positive they're going to see if their test is giving positive or not and that's the 22 here 22 out of 24 were actually testing positive compared to rt pcr two did not on the negative side they tested all confirmed negative samples as negative so that's good news so as a result they calculate something called positive agreement which is 22 out of 24 91.7% negative agreement 28 out of 28 100% okay and i've talked about this in the past but this is not let me repeat it this is not the same type of accuracy that you can expect at an individual level okay this is lab validation but i want us to pay attention to what they call this 95% confidence interval how confident are we they report 92% 91.7 but actually the number could be anywhere between 73 to 98.9 could be anywhere that's because they have tested very few samples on the positives on the negative side it's a lot better 87.7 to 100% now i as i mentioned sample size is small so positive agreement could range from 73 to 98.9 and still it doesn't mean that when you test and you get positive is 73% chance you are positive or 99% chance you are positive that is different and i've talked about that in other videos it's called positive predictive value we do some math and i explain that in other videos i'll give you a link to those videos as well but let's go with what they have what they are reporting now same data is used to report accuracy of binex now ag card for home test okay same 53 samples but there's a larger data set available for operator tested ag card results close to 460 samples there the positive agreement was 84.6 but the 95% confidence interval was 76.8 to 90.6 so about the same doesn't matter if you test 50 or 500 the range you can expect is about 77 to 91 but the negative agreement is a lot better Now watch some of my other videos I'll give you a link to fully understand what this means at an individual level but this is as far as the accuracy reported accuracy is concerned of these particular tests So how does it look like in the real world right this was done in the lab and we can do all the math and do some predictions what are people reporting in the real world but before I go into the data let me tell you that millions tens of millions of these tests have been sold in fact According to the latest quarterly report, Abbott is reporting more than a billion dollars of sale from these uh, rapid tests. More than a billion dollars. So many, many millions of these tests have been sold. So whatever I'm going to show you, look at it in the context of that large number of sale. This data is reported to the FDA through their MOD database. It's an adverse events reporting database. And if you're interested, Uh, leave a comment below i'll send you a link more information about how to access this data it's available not only for this test but all other tests you can go look up all the data and if you are interested i can make another video about how you can look up that data and understand what it means uh, leave in your comment below if you would be interested in learning more about how fda monitors these these bad results in the marketplace how do they do it and what actions do they take so anyway through the time period january 1 to november 30 they are reporting many false positive results about 500 false negative results around 250 non reproducible results about 100 all other issues also about 100 so more than 1000 reports of unreliable results have been received by the fda about this particular test now i'm not bashing this test i don't have any relationship with the manufacturer I'm just an objective uh, uh, analyzer of this data. That's what I do. I'm a technical person. I look at data and I share my understanding with you. And that's why I gave you the context. Some of these numbers may look pretty high because they have also sold millions of tests. But here's how I look at it. It doesn't matter whether the number is a hundred or a thousand or ten thousand. 
if you are the one who experienced a false positive or a false negative and because of that it impacted your life that counts even one matters so that's another way to look at it but of course we have to put put this in the context of the big picture too right so this is what the data looks like it is not surprising that people will find false positive results i've talked about that in many of my videos uh, you can find them on the channel it is not surprising that people are reporting false negative results non reproducible results that's how it works it's not 100% accurate it is a good test but we need to be mindful of the risk related to false positives and false negatives okay so does this test still work with omicron right this is the big million dollar question i found this on abbott's website we have already conducted an assessment of the omicron variant and we are confident our rapid and pcr tests can detect the virus that's it so i say what does it mean is there any change in the sensitivity of these tests is there any change in the accuracy of these tests we don't see anything of course i'm giving them the benefit of the doubt because it's too new i'm pretty sure they are working on that and as soon as data is available to the public i will bring that to you but this kind of a statement doesn't really help us too much right so i wanted to know what the fda is planning to ensure that tests are reliable they continue to to be reliable so they have taken a very good action they have already recognized that establishing additional conditions is necessary to mitigate the potential risk of false negative results due to either decreased sensitivity or non reactivity now i'd like it only half way because they talk about false negatives they are more worried about false negatives but in my mind even a false positive is a problem nevertheless what they are requiring manufacturers to do in the short term immediately is to change some of the labeling share in your comments below how much attention do you pay to all the instructions and labeling that you receive as part of your test when you're about to do the test share in your comments below but they are requiring manufacturers or test developers to change their labeling and acknowledge that this information is not may not be absolutely current for all the variants but on an ongoing basis they are asking for reevaluation retesting of sars of the impact of sars cov2 viral mutations on test performance they are asking for that data and as soon as that data becomes available made public i'll bring that to you but in the meantime i want to share with you that fda on their website is going to report different tests that they find are not effective and they have already started doing that so share in your comments below if you would be interested in learning more about what fda is doing and how to access that information i'll bring that to you so we covered a lot i know we covered a lot and it might seem overwhelming but it is important to keep track of how the data is evolving what is it looking like in the real world and what is the impact of omicron okay so omicron is new let me say a few things uh, in the beginning we mentioned that these rapid antigen tests are detecting the n protein so how do they do that right you might have seen that color change when you do the test and you might want to see my video where i demonstrate that that color change is happening because the n protein from the virus is being captured by another designer antibody now they design those antibodies specifically and quite often they use a combination of different antibodies not just one but those antibodies are sensitive to the n protein it's like a lock and key mechanism antigen antibody they are captured on a line and they that's how the color changes so as long as the mutations on the n protein and we know omicron has mutations on the n protein but it depends upon how many and where they are and i'll look more into it and bring you more updates in the future videos but it's very sophisticated fascinating i've been reading a lot of papers about this very fascinating so it depends upon how many mutations and where they are so far so far we know that whatever mutations have been found in omicron on the n protein are not in the area which is important for the anti n antibody being used in these tests that's what we have found and more testing is being done to actually generate data to support this finding or this assumption 
and I'll bring that to you as soon as it becomes publicly available. So that's good news. Good news is that so far, we do not believe that the test performance will be affected. Now, I've already shared with you the data and that should tell you, this is not as good as an RT-PCR test. It's good enough, but not as good as RT-PCR test. There are still false positives and still false negatives, but it is pretty much the same as what it was before. So Delta, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, whatever variants we have seen before, the test is going to continue working at the same level of performance as before. It's kind of good news. But we stop and ask, it's a matter of time. What if now the virus mutates on the end protein where now those antibodies being used on the test are not effective? That's when this will turn from a variant of concern to a variant of high consequence. And I talked about those another video just released last week. You can find that on my channel. So it still remains a variant of concern. So far, we should feel good that these tests are gonna continue working. And as the future evolves, more data becomes available. All eyes are on it and mine will be too. And I'll bring you this information as soon as possible. Share with me your thoughts and comments. Please continue to engage in a conversation dialogue that you have been doing. I've been really happy with that conversation, please continue doing that. Let me know what's on your mind. Let me know if it's helpful to you or if you would like to see some other information being discussed. I thank you for your attention and interest. Wish you all the best. Please stay safe.